I am Marco, also known as Bue, the drummer of Larson, and I'm Fabrizio, the guitar player of Larson. <laughs> Side this kind of mountain closing, just like hugging us all the fucking time, you know. So it's, it's nice. And Torino is um, it's well known for the car industry, so I think that maybe not now, but the early stuff we were recording or not recording, just playing, was kind of influenced about this. I mean, you know, the north is foggy, car industry, smog, this kind of stuff, wild. The south of Italy is supposed to be sunny and whatever. So I, mean, I think that's sunny for sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that maybe the influence, I mean, it wasn't like, I mean, we even didn't think about it, but I think that the environment, so the smoggy, gray town we live in, was kind of influencing our first characters <laughs> and then in the, it, that, the music we play. It's a very good quality of life, you know, it's still kind of cheap to be that kind of town with very good food, a lot of restaurants, it's probably one of the towns in Italy with the largest number of restaurants for the amount of people. Incredible good wine, actually it's the best world wine, world, world wine, <laughs> <laughs> worldwide wine, you know, so it's, uh, it's nice, I think that when you can live in a kind of relaxed way that any kind of way get into your job, whatever you're doing, and in our case is music, so I think we play kind of relaxed music. background 
I grew up on a small village on the mountain where there was not much of a radio that you can listen to, that, nothing like alternative music. So I didn't have any kind of exposure to contemporary music until I was uh, back in town, back in Turin when I was 14. And uh, the first thing I, I listened to in a kind of serious way what was my aunt was listening, which was kind of like a Tolkien, uh, Patti Smith, uh, that kind of the new wave from New York. And, uh, and then all the new wave came in my eyes, so whatever, Joy Division, The Cure. And I think that is kind of common for everyone in the band, even for the other people, something like Roberto and Paolo, which are the other guitar player and the drummer, they grew up in Turin, and so maybe they had the chance before me to go to see concerts of people like Psyche TV or wherever. And uh, well, now he's going to talk for himself, but he was in the South, and so was even a, a kind of different landscape. But I, I don't think that actually to live in Italy has never been a, a problem. I mean, uh, you can easily find a record there, it's always been pretty easy. And uh, despite the fact that I was in a small village anyway, somehow music was coming in for people that maybe was living in, in the main town. And, uh, and it's not been difficult for us never actually to have our music out of Italy. Actually, our main problem has been for a while, it's not anymore, now it's fine. But for a while, our problem has been to have our music distributed in Italy and not outside of Italy, you know, so... <laughs> but uh, it's not even a problem that, because I think that, I mean, there's not such a difference to be... I mean, there's plenty of difference to be Italian, American, or Canadian, or Russian, wherever you are. But when you talk about music right now, I don't think there's anything like the market exists anymore, so there is... everything is everywhere. If you just want to get it, you can, so... I don't think that geographically you can get affected somehow in any way. Yeah, like Fabrizio said, uh, I think that we all we were all listening to you know goth or new wave or whatever when goth. we goth stuff when we were young, and that of course is something we still you know like and we still bring with us. But then I, I don't think that I mean I always liked music when I had the chance to come into Torino, so I was like 14 as Fabrizio. I started to listen to serious stuff, but I mean, the, it wasn't like, uh, I mean, I always liked music, but I never thought about playing music. It wasn't like I have to do this, and so after, I don't know, 10 years, finally I managed to play. It, Actually, we're not me, thinking about playing yeah, music. For me, it was kind of an accident, <laughs> I think for Fabrizio as, as well, I couldn't play any instrument, so it was like, we started then like, a, you know, like, not a job or something to do and drum was the only instrument that wasn't taken so I took it so it's it's two separate ways I still listen to a lot of music and now being a musician is something that is that happened and, but it's cool so I think that the I mean all the 80s music is something that you really move us yeah right now it's just kind of trendy the 80s are back again but every time they're talking about the 80s they're talking about the actually the shitty stuff side of the 80s but I think that the 80s has been really a lot of experimental things going on there was people that was really digging deep into unknown ground to try to get something interesting out of that and uh, that for sure has an influence on it and then Boy was right I mean even if all of this maybe somehow is an influence on our music right now I don't know really if it did, because the thing is that we were not able to play at all, and so we start to play the Ralsa music, and uh, that is the only thing we have done. You know, I was not able to play guitar, I was not able to play drum, and it was the same for everyone in the band. So basically, the only music we can play is Ralsa music, which in a way, I mean, I think kind of forced us to be unique and have a our own character, because we had no choice, you know. We tried a couple of times, you know, especially when you're younger and you start to play, you say, oh, that's cool, I want to sound like that. And every time, every time we tried, we totally failed. And uh, we still failed. I mean, when, uh, when we came up with the idea for the Play album, uh, we thought about, well, let's try to do something weird. Let's try to be hardest once in our life. And let's try to do something unpredictable, something like Cover of Attack. And that's been a big failure, which is probably our best album at the same time, you know. So I still think that to use failure as one of the main tools for music is a pretty good idea. Mistakes, error, unpredictable thing, whatever is coming up. You know. I don't think it's really a 
said uh, of how many people come to see a show in Italy in confront of whatever is coming showing up in, in America, because that I think it really depends on how popular the band is. It's a matter of attitude, and from one point of view, America is really better because I think that contemporary music, I don't like to use the word rock music because it's nothing to do with us, but even that is kind of contemporary music in a way. It's more part of your culture, of American culture. For European, it's still something like uh, outside, you know. So, from that point of view, it's easier to get in touch with people interested in your music in the States and in Europe. But from the other side, in Europe, music is still considered more uh, an event because it's not part of the culture, so it's something special happening. Which means that you can play in better places with nice PA or the microphone you need. Pretty good fee, actually, in our case, a pretty good fee. And uh, we have dinner paid, accommodation. That's why I think that when a band, American band, come back from Europe, they say, oh, that's heaven. Because actually, it is. And that's why, actually, we don't like necessarily to. I mean, we love to be here, and we would like to do it more often, actually. But the problem is that really rough. You have really to fight, be a warrior of the street or something like that, which is. Oh shit, forget about it, you know? So, I think that that is the main thing. And uh, from the other side, there is that you really have to be good to get the European audience attracted. Because probably otherwise they would just consider you background music for their martini cocktails, you know? So, there are two phases of the same matter, you know? From a logistic point of view and from really talking about what it means to play around live and to tour, for sure Europe is far better than America. But from the other side, maybe in America, at least for our kind of music, you can get more audience. Also because I think that there's still some, I don't know how to say it, like when you play in your hometown or you're in your country, most of the time it's like people don't get so into your music I mean some do of course but it's like I mean especially when we play in our hometown I mean maybe in the latest year something changed but um, years ago it was like oh you know I know this guy he works like, like over there so they don't pay enough attention because they know you or maybe they see you around yeah, and of course, when sorry, oh, sorry. when a band comes from the US, it's like, oh, they're coming here to play, oh, worship them. But now, maybe, I mean, after almost 15 years, things has changed for us. So even if, if even if in, in our own town, people uh, pay a little more attention to us, also because we avoid to play there most of the time, because, you know, friends show up and, and it seems like people are forced to come to your show, which is not. So I, we prefer to play in another city in Italy where people, I mean, if there's 10 people, we know that they're there because they like the music. And in your own town, it's always like your mother, your sister, <laughs> the friend of a friend is coming. But I think it's getting better. I mean, not only for us, it's getting better because maybe especially in Torino now we have a lot of stuff going on a lot of bands playing not only the huge stuff that usually goes to Milano uh, so the middle and small stuff is coming to town so people is kind of getting used to it it's not like oh you know the big gods are coming here it's more friendly even the venues are maybe smaller so you can meet the people and understand their human beings so, no, not us. Okay. <laughs> 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 Never on, you know, we never fight. I mean, we can go on and uh, 
discuss something for hours, but we never fight. And this is very good. So I will never replace some of the guys, and I hope <laughs> it's the same for them. <laughs> because it, it won't be the same. I mean, as Fabrizio said, we started playing our music. We didn't begin playing cover songs of it. So, I mean, um, without any of us now, it wouldn't be the same. seen especially in Italy like something that it's kind of snobbish or whatever. Names, names, names. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like that. From the very first time when we did the first record that was produced by Martin Bisi, it was like taking a chance. We said, okay, let's try to do this and see if it works. And it worked and it worked with Michael Jira as well. And so it's not like we want the big names in our records so they sound better or whatever is that the people involved in our records, especially now, as Julia Kent from Anthony and Johnson, Jabo, it's people that we met before working with them. So it's not like, uh, uh, I love your music, so why don't you play with us? It's like people we met, especially with Julia, we became friends. And so, naturally, this became a musical friendship. Yeah. But it's based on you know personal relationship. We met her by chance because Fabrizio is setting up concerts in Torino. So, and this is happening. And I, I mean, with Baby, it is the same. It's like uh, we, we we met her. We of course we like what she does musically, but we love her <laughs> like a human being. And so having her or Julia or whoever on the records is like uh, you know having friends at dinner. It's like that. So I mean, in Italy, most of the time, people is not uh, they they kind of surprised because when we did the record with Michael Girai, it was like, oh, how do you do that? And it's like you try it, you try it, and if it works, I mean, if the guy or the woman, or whatever, says yes, actually, it's been very easy. I mean, every time it's been very easy because I think that we have a true passion about music. We have a true passion both as musicians and as listeners. So of course, the first thing is that you really like someone, you know, you really like his job and his work and he said, well, let's try to get out of myself for a while and get connected with someone and see what is going to happen because of that. And uh, that's of course the first step and then all the rest happened. And if the rest will not happen, which is the friendly relationship, well, that will not make sense uh, to go home. I mean, maybe that will be just one-off collaboration, but we're not really interested in that. We're really interested to, to communicate. I think that's a, a very, I mean, you're very proud to be a band for the reason we said before, to be really frank, which in itself is a form of communication, you know. And we want that to be part of our project, part of our project. <laughs> so, is a uh, for us it makes sense in that way, you know. It's something like, especially right now, because technology is so cheap and so it's getting very really easy and easier all the time to record something in your home, in your apartment, which is fine. But at the same time, is making music kind of an isolated product. And uh, we don't want that. We still want to, you know, to do our music with the people we like and uh, make it more interesting and richer. Because the fact that we are 
in a kind of way, you know, dragging other people into our small world. We, we want to keep it as a small world because it's Larsen world and, I mean, only arts can do that, as Marco said before, the four of us are Larsen and everyone else that come in is Larsen for a day, today, maybe one year, and that is very important because there's a kind of energy going on. So, yeah, the networking is totally part of the project. <laughs> first song that we wrote after the Rebel album, so it was something like to give a continuity in our whole history, you know. And uh, even because the, the, new, the new album says is a kind of, for sure it's, I mean, at least for me the way I, I got it, which is probably right because I'm one of the band, so I think that they got it right, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. it's something like a, a bridge between what we were and what we're going to be, you know, is uh, there are six or seven songs on the album, I'm not sure, I think there are seven now. There are seven songs, and uh, at least three of them, which are the ones that we record with your body, they are pretty old songs. Uh, actually, the first things that we wrote after Rebel, and after Rebel we already have other two albums, and then we get back to the song, we took the project back together, and we add new things, and the new thing is, of course, you can kind of far from the other. And we discovered that, uh, I don't know why, that point in our life, uh, maybe because it's been releasing for us to get back to work after Rebel, which has been an exhausting album, we started to write some kind of light material, light music. Light, I mean, sunny, as sunny as we can, which is not much, but it's still as sunny as we can. <laughs> and then when we get back about that, we said, oh, this is really too sunny. And so the new thing is it's dark, even because we kind of feel the need to be dirty and rough again. And then we'll be kind of ethereal for a while and dreamy. And that's part of our music. But right now, I think it's even kind of political issue to be kind of dirty again. And so the two sides of the thing behind the album, it, and that is again is a kind of robust thing, is again a loop, you know. And so even the title say yes, so is mirrored. It means nothing. Even in Italian it just is mirrored. Actually say in Italian is six uh, and because uh, at the beginning we thought that this was our sixth album, but then we discovered it was our fifth album. And uh, <laughs> but we but we kept the title anyway, you know, because we write the mirror thing. And Rebel was funny in as well and uh, Again, is looping. We are gonna loop forever, I think. Actually, we're gonna loop more than before, you know. So. Yeah. 